do you see? I see the castle! Oh boy, what do you see, Joseph? He says castle! Are you dreaming of a trip to Walt Disney World with your special needs family? Can you wave hi to Mickey? Are you dreading what all that might entail? This week on Autism Anywhere, we're going to be going over the special needs tips and tricks we have learned over the past 10 years of trips to Walt Disney World. These are the things you need to know to make the most out of your trip and to help things go as smoothly as possible. Thanks for tuning in. Please click the subscribe button below and click the notification bell, and that way you're notified when we post a new video. We'll be ready to go after the rope drop. If you haven't seen it yet, please check out part one of our Walt Disney World for Special Needs video, where we cover the general basics of Walt Disney World that apply to everyone. This video will be building off of that one. Now, I need to stress here that the accommodations and tips I'll be giving here apply to special needs individuals only. In the past, there was a better and easier system, but because of abuse, things were changed. So please use this knowledge responsibly and as needed. When you get to Walt Disney World, I bet you'll be checking into your hotel first, so we're going to start there. When making your reservations, let everyone know your situation. Tell them any concerns you might have. If there's a possibility of nighttime accidents, let them know that there might be more frequent sheet changes required. If you have a child that might elope. Tell them they might be able to give you a lock or consider bringing a door chime that you can attach with command strips to the door. One thing we do, and this applies for all hotels, not just Walt Disney World, is we bring an air mattress for our son Joseph. This way both of the boys have their own bed. Since an air mattress is plastic, we don't have to worry about accidents as much. But an even better benefit is the consistency. Since he's used to sleeping on it in hotels and it's his, he gets to sleep easier. If this is something you think that might help your child, you can get one and have him start sleeping on it at home here and there beforehand to get them used to it. We typically do laundry once or twice during our trip. Most hotels have facilities available. Some even text you when it's done and they're all fancy. We either squeeze it in during an afternoon break or either my wife or I will stay up a little bit later. We bring large Ziploc bags to keep the smelly items contained until wash day. Another thing to consider at the hotel are the pools. And the pools at the resorts are usually very cool and inviting, especially if you're going over the summer. If you think you may be swimming on your trip and don't normally, try to go swimming a few times at home beforehand. That will help wear down some of the newness factor and the novelty of the pool and might help with transitions. We try to do that. So when we leave the pool, it'll be an easier, come on, Joseph, let's get going. So on to the parks. You have all your fast passes. You have all your dining reservations, and both were made a long time ago, hopefully. As you enter the park, have your entire group in tow and head to guest relations. You'll do several things on this trip, but I'll touch on them one at a time. There's usually a short line, but it moves pretty quickly. When you get to a cast member, say it's the first day of your vacation and introduce the individual with special needs and just touch on the basics. You don't have to go too deep into things. For example, I'd say, hello, this is our first park and first day. This is Joseph. He's on the autism spectrum and we need to ask about getting a DAS. 
they'll probably jump right in there and explaining the system. They take a picture of the person with special needs and they scan everyone's wristbands or tickets who are in the group that's traveling with them. So what is DAS? DAS is Disney's Disability Access Service. Essentially, it works as an additional fast pass that you can book the day of. One person in your party goes ahead to the attraction to the fast pass return area and you tell the cast member you need a DAS return time. They scan your wristband or ticket and give you a time to come back. Usually it's a little bit better than the posted wait time. Like a fast pass, you return after the given time and get into the fast pass queue and you ride with very little wait. Note that the special needs individual has to be one of the riders. They check the name in the picture that was taken uh, earlier. Unlike FastPass, there's no end time for the DAS window. You can ride it at any point after that. However, you can't get a new DAS return time until you've ridden the previous one or you can cancel it. Ideally, you keep in mind your existing fast passes, and you look and you see a ride that you don't have one for that has a moderate weight. You send someone in your party over to check in for a return time. While doing that, you ride another ride, eat, do a fast pass shop, and then when you're done, hopefully your time has passed and you can go ride the DAS ride. Now, if the time posted is less than 25 minutes, I would not bother with the DAS and just get into the standby line. You'd waste more time walking back and forth, probably. Usually the waits are shorter than posted, as I mentioned. You will probably get most use out of the DAS in Magic Kingdom because it's smaller and has many more rides than the other parks. In other parks, we find it more handy to get a DAS for the bigger rides and kind of keep it as a backup if needed. Uh, depending on the crowd level, though, you might be able to make more use of it at other parks. Now, if you out there are panicking when I said a 25-minute wait and think that isn't possible with your family, I've been there, I know exactly what you're thinking. Which brings us to our next big, big tip consider a wheelchair. The Disney parks are beautiful, but they're huge, and they can be sensory overload with the crowds and music, sensory inputs coming from all sides. In our experience, using a wheelchair makes a world of difference in our son's ability to handle things. That way he has his own space, people aren't bumping into him or stepping over him. When he's overstimulated, he can just focus on things that he's holding. We don't have to worry about him darting off because of a seatbelt. It's a good home base for a backpack full of items, snacks, his tablet, fidgets, anything. One of the better reasons to use a wheelchair is wheelchairs are allowed in just about every attraction line. And there are a few rides that have an alternate entrance for guests in wheelchairs. If your child is young enough for a stroller, that brings us to the second thing you'll be doing back at Guest Relations your first day. They have a special tag that they can attach to strollers that designate it stroller as wheelchair. Now this allows you to keep your child in their stroller in the ride queues. Now I'll warn you to make sure they put the tag somewhere very visible on your stroller because every time you walk up to an attraction, the cast member will be waving you to the stroller parking area and you just have to point out that tag and they'll say, oh, come on through. We did that several times with Joseph, but as he was outgrowing strollers, we investigated things and ended up buying a used pediatric pushchair on eBay. In our case, it's a conveyed easy rider. It folds and has a five point harness. Now there's wheelchair rental in the parks, but it's quite expensive. A cheaper option is the Orlando scooter and stroller rental places also rent wheelchairs. You book online and they drop it off at the resort the day you arrive and pick them up at the end. If you think it might be something you could use regularly, I just looked and Amazon has a folding transport wheelchair with a seatbelt for just a little over $100. I'll link it in the description below. 
Joseph uses his when we go any place that has a lot of people, crowds, or waiting, museums, malls, Ikea, and so forth. I'm sure you'll see it in the pictures I'm showing behind occasionally. General tips for stroller and wheelchairs, bring an extra poncho. If you have to park it outside for some reason, pop-up showers are very frequent, so covering it is a good idea. We also typically decorate his chair. Uh, we bring battery-operated Christmas lights or stockings to put on it, and it's just fun and gets attention. Next topic is bathrooms. There are companion restrooms located around most parks. When you get into the park, grab a few maps and they'll all be clearly marked. When we go over the parks individually, we'll mention some of our favorites. The Thrones of the Kingdom, you can't beat that. If you are in need of an adult changing table or similar accommodations, just head to the first aid slash baby care station in the park. Speaking of which, if you have any medicine that might need refrigeration, uh, first aid will be able to handle it. Now, food. Walt Disney World is excellent about handling special diets of any kind. I would advise when you make any table service reservation to make note of it and mention it again when checking in at the restaurant. We've traveled with several people on special diets or with severe allergies, and they're good about checking with you. Typically, a chef will come out and point to the items that are perfectly safe and suggest alternatives. I've even experienced chefs walking guests through buffet lines and getting food from behind that hasn't been cross-contaminated. Quick service locations usually have common allergens and diets listed, uh, such as peanut allergies or gluten, but they have big, big books with the ingredients of every item up where you order, so mention that to the ch checker and they'll be able to get that for you. So, other general tips. The parks do have a variety of quiet areas that are designated, but they're really just places around the parks that tend to be less crowded. We'll talk about them in the park shows. Until then, I'll put in the links below their official cognitive disability pamphlet that, uh, pamphlet that lists them. Noise blocking headphones, as I've mentioned in other videos before, are excellent and we highly recommend them. Some rides can get very loud or have sudden noises. Also, some rides can get dark, so a keychain flashlight of some sort is handy just to have them hold for rides that have dark segments. Make note of parade times. There'll be lots of crowds around parade routes. Avoid trying to navigate around the parks at those times. It's a good time actually to ride rides if you don't want to see the parade. Uh, also note there are designated wheelchair locations for parades and fireworks. I would suggest to eat earlier than normal to avoid crowds. Also, if there's any item that your child requires food-wise, you are allowed to bring food into the parks, just no liquid ice in coolers. Plastic straws were recently removed from the parks, so be sure to bring your own if you need them. So that's all I can think of at the moment. So the next videos will be about the Disney parks individually with some of our favorites and things to avoid. Any things I mentioned will be linked below, and if you have any tips, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a Disney day!